this right here. This is on aluminum, and this piece of aluminum is four inches wide by two inches deep. So I'm using the ultra fine detail taper, uh, taper ball nose bit from IDC Woodcraft. I'll get that for you in a minute to show you. But I want to see how much detail I get out of this thing. I won't be talking a whole lot in this video, but I think it's uh, just one of these things uh, just cool to watch. I wish I could drown the sound of the machine out a little bit. So what is starting to carve now, that's the uh, stem on the leaf. Good morning, Mike. Hello, Russell from the UK. Texas, hey, what's going on, Brian? With Doug in New York. So I am experimenting with aluminum uh, using the ultra fine taper ball nose bit, and that's uh, this bit right here. It's the ultra fine detail 3D ball nose bit from IDC Woodcraft. And you see, it's got a really, really fine radius on there. And that, that is uh, a .015 radius. And one of the things you'll notice is the, if, if you order bits, you're going to start seeing the QR codes on your bits. So now you can scan it with your cell phone to get all the data, especially if I have to update the data for some reason, which but it's just I'm keeping all the data in one place. It makes things easier for me. And uh, also, make sure you get the IDC Woodcraft phone app for your phone. I've got a, an app out now for Apple and Android. Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I am running this. I've got to go into the... Uh... Hang on a second. i got to look at the settings I've got for this. So I'm currently running it at 50 inches per minute. And this is at a, I, I went from an 8% step Because I want to get as clean of a cut as I can get on it. It's actually starting to come out pretty cool. So now, uh, this is, I'll show you again what we're doing for you popped on. And I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me talking, uh, just somebody say, yeah, I can hear you. But we're doing these two 3D models on a two inch by four inch 
piece of aluminum. So I, I want to see how we do with aluminum. We are using the long mill MK2 CNC router. Thank you, Bubba. Oh, yeah, 3D printed parts for CD uh, for CNC machine. So you'll notice that in one direction, here, let me put my camera back down. You notice when it's cutting in one direction, it's leaving like a little bit of a burr or chips kind of stuck there as it's like right now, that way. And then on the, on the back cut or uh, uh, climb cut, it's cleaning it up. So what's happening, number one, is we're working with aluminum. And aluminum has a very different uh, properties. And obviously, because it's metal, not wood. <clears throat> and it can be a little gummy. It, it does something called galling on the tool. And galling is, it, it gets like bubble gum, and it'll get stuck up in the roots of the tool. Now, as it's going that way, it's doing a conventional cut, so that it's... Focus there. I'm not sure why it's not focusing so well. or conventional cut, the, the tool, the bit is turning clockwise like that, and it's coming across, and it's, 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 it's leaving behind these little pieces, like the, the aluminum is kind of hanging up on the, on the end of the tool, and when it comes back, it strikes and it sticks to the, to the little corner in there. Now, when it's coming back on a climb cut, which basically a climb cut is when it the, the bit is actually turning like that and it's rolling along with it. It's almost like a tire, a wheel going down the street. So it's climbing up the material. And climb cuts tend to leave a much, much better finish. So when if you're starting to cut metal, you want to keep an account on your rough cut. You always want to do conventional, which is this way or it's, it's turning in the clockwise direction and it's just chopping material out of there and then you come back with a fine cut it shears it away and then it's but when the next cutter comes in it's already come in to it's hard to explain here um, I gotta get paper and pencil cut is formed like this, it comes in and cuts the chip away, and the next cutting flute is already coming in for the next edge here to make a cut. So it's kind of like cutting the cheese, if you will, right? You're shearing away a piece of cheese. This doesn't smell as bad, but it's coming in, shearing it from the flat edge of the cheese, and it's just, it's always leaving a clean edge. When you're coming in this way, um, this way, it's kind of rubbing in the metal. So, so it tends to lead to walk this way. So, the question of, oh, no, I don't need room. If you set your feed up right, your feeds and speeds, 
on aluminum, you don't need lube, but it's it's not a bad idea to do that. The same thing with brass. It's not a bad idea to, you can use even from the WD-40 on it. WD-40 is, uh, stands for water displacement. A lot of people use it for lubricant, and they use it as a very light oil compound in WD-40. If you get your feeds and speed set up right for aluminum, then you don't need to uh, uh, use it. And it also depends on the geometry of the tool. So not all the bits are usable on steel or hour. And so I'll try to run through that Okay, so the ones that you can absolutely on steel, uh, uh, any material basically, you're going to be machining uh, up to hard, high uh, First of all, I'll talk about the lightning bits. So these are uh, carbide drill bits. I've had special grinds put on the end of them. Uh, when you, if you're making like cribbage boards, you won't believe how fast these things drill. It's one second for a hole to the full fruit line. And it's one plunge, there's no packing. Now, steel, you have to pack. Because you gotta get the steel chips out of there, you gotta break the steel chips. Uh, with aluminum, if you come in at the right feed rate, the aluminum will leave a long, stringy chip and will run right up the flute and right out the hole. As long as when you're drilling with aluminum, you don't drill past where the aluminum can come out. So if you come up in here in one full stroke, the aluminum's gonna bind up in there and it's gonna be all, it's, it'll be all galled up in here. And uh, you have to dig it out. Okay, so. Um, the, I haven't experimented with my bits. I didn't design my bits necessarily for, for steel. So I can't answer that question effectively other than the drill. better to run a rocking pass than finishing, so it's not much load on the finishing bit. Um, because it's such a shallow cut, and the way I designed the, the uh, tape of ball nose with a, with a, a so this is basically a 20 degree bit for a 10 degree half angle. And so it's not a lot of stress in the bit, especially since we're only with a 5% step over. We're taking off a very little thin skin, uh, what they call a spring cut or skim cut uh, at a time. So very little load on the bit itself. So I, so I wasn't going to be a rough one. Now, if there's a lot more material, a lot more depth to take out of it, yes, I would come in with a rough bit. Hey, Glenn, how's it going? So, for those who have jumped on, I'll show you what we're carving. We are carving on an aluminum. We're using the long mill MK2 with the trim router. I'm set on three, and I am carving a 3D image onto a block of aluminum that is two inches long, uh, tall by four inches long, and the intent is to, first of all, I'm experimenting a little bit with this bit, because I've never really cut aluminum with it before. I'm also experimenting with the long mill, and making sure we've got feeds and speeds worked out okay. And that's what we were carving. And what I want to do is get all the detail that I can. I want to see how much detail I can get out of this on the aluminum. And so far, I'm, I, I'm quite impressed with the finish, 
it, it's kind of nice when you design a bit for wood and you try it on a material like this and you're getting unexpectedly good finishes out of it. So that, that, I guess that comes with uh, having been in um, CNC for so many years earlier in my career. Namocrafts, thank you. Namocrafts just contributed five dollars. This is kind of an impromptu live. I was just going to experiment with this. I thought, you know, it's kind of cool to watch this. We like to watch this sometimes. Like watching coffee. Uh, yeah, like, uh, it's like watching a campfire. I don't know why it's like coffee. So the plunge rate, let me look at my son. I've got a plunge rate set at uh, 20, uh, 25. first path. You see it's not doing any plunge right now. It's just it's coming back and forth. It's just right now it's just doing step over. I gotta step away from the camera for a second. I'll be right
right, I am back. Thank goodness, uh, years and years of machining really made a difference. Uh, and then, so, three, give me a second, I will pull it up on, uh, on Google and I'll show you what the different number settings in the key It's not something I generally keep in my head. different RPMs are for your for your different trim routers is you can just go to Google and type in your machine. So I'm just doing Makita trim router. I didn't need to type in the code, the, the specific model numbers. It's speed chart. And then went to I went to images and then here it is. So number three is 17,000 roughly. Right? Give or take a uh, 500. So, oh, and I want to tell you, I am testing a brand new bit on the Phantom. And you can see that board, that's an MDF three quarter inch thick. And uh, this new bit, I was running full depth back and forth at 350 inches per minute. And I, I, whenever I get new bit designs, I try to break the bits. I find the limits of them and I couldn't break the bit. The Phantom CNC has NEMA uh, 32 motors in them, the stepper motors, which are which have a lot of ass to them. And and uh, I was I took it up to 400 inches per minute. And it, even the Phantom was like, shit, what are you doing to me, man? But so that was ripping out really quick. I've calculated that cut distance back and forth. That was 192 feet. Now I just picked up Full sheets of MDF here, so I'll put a four by four and I'm gonna run it all the way through. Right, let's check out here. This cool. Yeah, so this is for the R17. I really got it. Uh, Yeah, it's actually the same numbers I use on, on wood. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit more testing with some of these bits to see if I can get them amped up a bit. Uh, you know, if I'm running the same feed rate on the wood, of course, I got a much uh, thinner step over. There's the, the amount of load on this bit right now is uh, so minimal. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do grass. I don't have a grass pocket. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, that's what we, a lot of people make their little brandy on. So I'm going to have some wood grass. Okay, so this thing's starting to take some shape. Let's go back to the vector. So you can see what we're making. We're doing a 3D carve. We just run the calculation here, so you can see exactly what it is. Well, those are the two 3D models that we're making. And on a two inch wide, uh, tall by Orange wide, and my intention is to see how much detail I get out of such a, a, a high detail resolution model. 
on such a small area with the ultra fine quality detail for the final aluminum. So you see now the leaves are Okay, so we're looking at the stems right here. Of the flowers. So I'm already seeing some kick-ass detail. Again, I'm doing this on the long mill MK2. Right now I get the 30 by 30. And this is my messy setup. I pulled some of my bits out to uh, set it because of that question before. So there's where I hold the bits. Uh, and it's raining cats and dogs outside right now. It's supposed to be raining all day. And unfortunately, we've got a little leak in the roof, and some, so some water was dripping down on my table right there. That's MDF, so I had to pull the table away. And thank goodness, I got this Rockler. Um, this is Rockler, it's a tilt table. You know what? I'm going to tilt this thing so you can see it, because uh, it's so cool. Uh, but I got this Rockler roll-around tilt table for the machine, and I will try to remember to put a link. I thought it was kind of weird to be doing it, but no, I love having the mobility on this, and it's also good for space so you can have a lot of space. Because with the tilt table, the uh, machine will, instead of taking up four feet plus, as far as depth goes, it'll take up about two feet, two feet, six inches. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of liking this. Elijah, how much power is the spindle? So this is not a spindle, it's a trim router. It's a Makita trim router that many CNC routers uh, come with. And the reason they do this, it's, um, it's just... There's not as much technology that needs to go into the control box to run a spindle. It reduces the cost of having a, a, you know, a variable speed control, uh, the spindle, you know, those things up the cost. So this is one of the things that makes CNC routers more affordable. So it's not a spindle. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this up for you. I just got to make sure everything's cleared out of the way. And the reason I'm tilting it up because I want to show you this uh, Rockwell tilt table, how it works. So. The one thing you always got to be careful of when you get, if you get a tilt table, is you got to make sure all your stuff's off the table, otherwise it all falls off. Also have my lamp right here. Now that I got it fixed, so it won't swing over that way when I tilt it. So I can uh, leave it there. But I got my roll around computer there, and I got to make sure the lamp's not going to hit it when it tilts.
And so now, the long mill is tilted to about 15 degrees. Still carving away. Oh, I can't, I can't be doing this without saying, hey, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and welcome to this video. You can see some of the water that got on my table. So if you just came on, what I am doing, first of all, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And I am running a test. Uh, I'm testing several things here. Number one is I am testing the capability of the long mill, MK2, on cutting aluminum. And then I'm also testing the ultra fine the camera set. I'm also testing the, the ultra fine detail 3D carving bit from IDC Woodcraft. IDCWoodcraft.com. And so you see the ultra fine 3D carving bit has a very small radius at the tip. So I want to make sure that this is capable of cutting aluminum, and I want to see how fine the detail is that I can get out of this. And so what I'm doing is I'm carving on an aluminum block that is two inches this way by four inches that way. And the 3D models that we are carving are these. So you can see there's a lot of detail in these 3D models. So Right in this area here, in the stamen of the flower, the folds of the petals, and there's a lot of detail in this maple leaf. So I want to see how much detail I can capture by having a 3D model that's that small. And so as we get in a little close, you can see I've got some, some aluminum hanging up in here. So I'll have to get in there to, to uh, clean that up a little bit. But overall, I'll have to come in and polish this up. Okay, to get, get these little pieces that are hanging up with aluminum to get them cleaned up. And cleaned off. We are currently running at 50 inches per minute. I'm at a 5% step over, so it's a very light side load on the bit. And that's 5% of a 0.015 radius. Right, so, so maybe 2 thousandths of an inch. So I've been running at 50 inches per minute right now, so I am going to now up the speed rate. The feed rate. We'll bump it up to 60. I am using the G Sender control software, which is the one I always recommend. 
if you have a, a gerbil based control. And so you can see where we're at right now on the model. And on that software, if you're if you're carving and you're like, oh, I could be carving faster or the bit is going too fast, you can override the feed rates and the rapid rates. Uh, the feed rates and the RPMs if you have a spindle in this area right here. So right now you can see it's at 50 inches per minute. And so I can bump it up with the plus. We'll just hit the plus and watch the 50. So it took it up to like 51. So I'm going to hit the double plus. And now it's taking up to 55. And in other words, we're at 110%. So plus ups it by 1%. The double plus out ups it by 10%. And then you can always reset it to the original by hitting the reset button. The minus will take it down 1%, and the double minus will take it down by 10%. And since I don't have a spindle on my machine, this is irrelevant. So I got another comment. several times. Yeah, the tilt table is excellent for dust collection. It all just falls right off. And yeah, let's see if it holds tolerance. So I guess you're talking, Gail, is after I tilt it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm really worried about uh, the capabilities. That's a good question. I'll keep that one in mind. Um, Wire was getting tangled up. Oh, thank you, Darren. No more wooden nickels. It's time to have aluminum nickels, isn't it? So you can hear it and you can see it. There's no chatter. Although what you are seeing. Yeah, yeah, the table is tilted, okay, uh, if it holds tolerance. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> of course, when we're dealing with the CNC router and woodworking, uh, when people come into it from a machinist field or mindset, they're looking for super tight tolerances, and we don't need that woodworking. It's, it's not reasonable, because wood has an expansion and contraction, uh, and it's just... We want to get tolerances, but we, but we have to think about it a little bit differently. Okay, so as far as the, the finish, let's see what we have. Chatter, okay. So you can see there's no chatter. If there was chatter, you would be seeing it along the sidewall right here. And so we're not getting any chatter. I upped the feed rate. on it. You can see a little bit of bumpiness in there. And that's that's more so from the bit and the speed of the bit. You got a tooth that's coming in, cutting while the thing is moving, and by the time the next flute comes around, it's already moved, and so it's going to leave a bit of a uh, ripple. So that's not the chatter. Chatter is caused when you get some resonance set up in the tool or harmonics uh, that can be set up either from, from, uh, from uh, not a strong structure in the machine or that the, you're getting too much deflection in the bit. And chatter can be, be, be one of the fast ways to work with chatter to turn the machine up and down as far as speed rates and feed rates, just tweak it a little bit and then until you get out, out of there because you will get natural frequencies set up inside of things. All 
all things have natural frequencies. And so you can get into those natural frequencies. It's a little bit different from chatter, but chatter gets set up when you, technically chatter is when you should pass the IDC bits, all right, my man, rocking it out. Um, I find... So, okay, so. BT, bit whim guy, am I climb milling as well as convention? Yes, this is the, this is being cut in the last. And there are two ways to, we're basically doing what they call a pocket cut with 3D contours inside of it. And so, and we're doing it in a raster. And what raster is, is basically the back and forth motion that you see. So, it, when it's, it comes over to this end, when it comes over to that end, right now it's, it's cutting into climb mode. And then it moves over a little bit, and now it's coming back into convention. So it's alternating back and forth. And that's, that's the nature of a raster cut. When, yeah, this is technically a clean out. It's really a finished cut, but it's also considered a cut. So, yes. Gail, you're right. It is doing both. This is the way the software, the vectors go. Now, all the vector software is set up in the blue.
you're right. A little bit of mist would help remove these chips. The ones that are sticking in there. That just knocked it right off. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Damn, I love these things. I'll show you what they are. That quick hit just not going off. Uh, a lubricant? Uh, yeah, a, a 
will always make it more better. The um, reason I'm not doing it is because I didn't prep my table for it. The last thing I want to do is get oil onto my MDF spoil board. You can see it's got lots of cuts in here. And uh, if I get that oil in there, it's going to swell up the board in, in spots. I'll have to resurface it. And I'm not simply going to do that. WD-40 works great. Uh, WD-40 is not necessarily a lubricant per se. It's meant to displace water. But they do put a little lubricant in it. We're going to see if I got something. We're going to see if the clean is cut off. So you can see how fast the brushes clean that up there. Right there, when I, when I hit it with that brush, it just took, took all these little bits right off. I can use lots of stuff. The problem is, you want to see it's around is you're paying the MDF spoil board. Right? So you get and then the, 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 you see the paint is starting to be removed from all the carbon in there. And so any kind of moisture I throw on that thing is going to absorb and just swell up the board and it's going to lose its flat. So I'm compromising. On the other hand, I'm not going to because I would have to put the lube up here, uh, which would be ineffective, and it's also an upcut uh, spiral. If it was a down cut, then it would draw the lube down from the top surface into the cut. So that's where the misting would be better. Patrick, I hear you. Uh, this is just an impromptu live. So I just turned the camera on. I was just starting on this project, and and uh, yeah, so I apologize for all the noise.
Yeah, I agree. I, Oz, I agree, man. It's either when we want to chill and have a beer, it's either watching a campfire or watching our CNC. They're both just the same. Okay, so if you just popped on to this video, then this is Garrett. I am Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And I am putting a long mill to the test on cutting aluminum. And at the same time, testing out the ultra fine detail 3D carving bit from IDC Woodcraft so you got a very fine point on it I want to see how it can hold detail on a 3D model figuring out some feeds and speeds Also see how it holds up. So right now I'm running at 60 inches per minute. It, you can see it's about a 0.2 deep cut at the deepest. I did not do any roughing. We're at a 5% step over. And we're cutting this in raster doing the finish cut. So raster is going back and forth between conventional and climbing. So I've just increased the feed rate again to 65 inches per minute. We have the Makita trim router set on three, which is about 17,000 RPM. like we're holding uh, the detail quite nicely. You can see right here on the leaf or on the, on the flower, the stems are coming out quite nice. This block of aluminum is two inches wide by four, uh, four inches wide by two inches. So this is very, very cool. Yeah. If you look at the petals, you can see the, radi the, the, the way the petals are radiated out. So it's definitely capturing that detail to the level that the bit can capture. If I even had a finer detail bit, it would capture this even. But this, this is pretty fine. You don't get them much smaller than this. I 
I am not full speed on the router. Say full speed, the spindle right now is turning at about 17,000 RPM. And I can go up to, I think, about 29,000. It's a trim router. As far as the feed rate on the long mill, they have it defaulted to 157 inches per minute. So if you try to run the long mill faster without changing the engine settings, it will never go faster than 157 inches per minute. But you can go into this, the G-Sender settings and change your values. I have done that to the you know, good capability of having 200 inches per Okay, what am I using to clean up the engraving? So these are these little scotch bright brushes. They go through Dremel. Uh, I buy them off of Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link to it down below this video after it's done. Uh, they're good pennies a piece. They don't last very long, uh, but they clean this up really quickly. So I'll show you what it looks like if you get Amazon. I recommend that you get them. So we'll just look at my computer and let's go to Amazon. And I'll show you. So I type in uh, Dremel Sanding Brush. And there it is. So, Oster, 100 pieces, one inch abrasive wheel. Okay, when you see that, it's $19, $19. That's it. Hope that helps. You will love them. They work great for wood as well. They're basically like scotch bright pads and different, uh, different grit, basically. All right, I have to step away for a moment. I'll be back in about five minutes. Mother Nature's home.
some more coffee too. Pipes are rusted, baby. They're super rusted. I'm a big coffee drinker. Okay, so you're going to see a change coming up in the CNC router industry for the home based CNC machines. And right now, the control, the brains that these things are run on, for the most part, if they're not proprietary, like Onefinity has their own control system. Uh, but Long Mill and Chipoco and uh, uh, many others have uh, the open source GRDL platform, which is basically a specific circuit board that, that was designed for something else. And I realized it has the capability of doing this, and this circuit board was inexpensive. And that's what enabled the home CNC market to start. And of course, 3D printers came out, uh, CNC routers, plasma cutters, all that stuff. It was affordable for you and me. Now there is a new control system that's coming out. It's called uh, Masco, I think it is. And it is it's going to be very affordable, but it is comparable to industrial-based CNC controllers, meaning you'll you'll be able to do something they call run subroutines, run multiple work offsets at one time. Um, and there's there's a whole horde of G-codes. G-codes is what is actually telling this router how to move. Uh, but there's a whole horde of G-codes that do all kinds of weird stuff. And you'll be able to incorporate those and they'll be much more flexible and things. And so a lot of the, the CNC router makers are starting to switch over to that. So you'll we'll, we'll see in this new controller coming out, and it still keeps it very affordable. The circuit board uh, used to be like three, four, five thousand dollars. So with this new master controller, it's uh, about two hundred dollars. Okay, so let's see. Banners, caravan. I'll be setting up a long mill in my garage. Residential neighborhood, houses of both sides. Do I need to do soundproofing to avoid neighbor disputes? So basically, what you do is just build an enclosure around your unit with uh, you can put plexiglass on it so you can see inside of it. That'll muffle the sound quite a bit, and then um, you know to insulate some of it as well. So the sound down there. Hope that helps. Uh, yeah. Okay. V2 wing guy just, just said that. Building enclosure. And there's a lot of, uh, you can do it. I think uh, someone on the site, they've got a resource for uh, a couple of people have some really good enclosures that they've built. So, if you jumped on, clearly we are cutting aluminum. And I am doing this to test out. 
longmail with aluminum and also the IBC Woodcraft Ultra Fine Detail 3D Carver almost to take the longest bit on aluminum to see you know, so if we could get there. I designed my bits for wood, but I want to I want to see if they are capable of aluminum. If they are, then I'll get them in the aluminum and the CNC router bit app, the IDC Woodcraft CNC router bit app that has all feeds and speeds on it and a lot of other information. If you don't have that, then you definitely want to get it because it has all the router bit feed and speeds and a lot of other information. I got it both for Apple and Android. So just go to your respective store and search IDC Woodcraft and download the app. Anyway, so I am testing this bit. Very fine ball nose on the tip. And it's performing better than I expected. Definitely holding some good detail. So far, the long mill is doing good. Now, what I want to do is get. Uh, I also want to do cut, cut away metal, right? Using the, like an upcut. So I'm using the long mill, right? You know that I use the long mill CNC router. That's what I teach you. About.
realize that's a good point, because the new controller will also have fourth axis capability. So it's got a lot of flexibility. This is, I can't wait for this thing to come out. Step away and get that coffee I've been wanting. And yes, I'm going to step away from my see it's here.
Alright, I'm back. RPMs up. No, nope, I can hear I can hear the tool chattering a little bit. Oh, well, you can see even see chatter marks starting to occur over here. So we slow it back down. So I was running, I just ran up to 75 inches per minute, briefly, and now I'm back down to 65. Now we're back down to 60. On that note, I would not, you know, if you're going to run at a tilt, you want to set it up as a tilt and run it that way. Because you are changing the physical dynamics of the machine. Uh, so when you're saying step cutting, I'm going back. So this is 3D, 8D. Um, because it's such a shallow cut, I'm just going with, with that tool as doing all the work, so there's no roughing in. This is the finished project. VT Wind Guy, remember kids, never leave your CNC unattended, especially coming from the master, huh? <laughs> there are... A, a, I guess on that note, I will say I've been watching this thing for the last, what, hour and 30 minutes. I know it's, uh, it's running very consistently. I know the nature of what I am cutting and how I'm cutting it. If I was doing uh, a lot of down cut, uh, I'll have to think about it as to when you don't leave your machine alone. But aluminum is not going to catch on fire nearly like you would. Name of crafts. You're gonna do one 3D, but it's circular shape. I believe it's better to start from out to inside. Well, you'll do an offset cut on that one. But it's circular shape, so the, the tool will come around in a circular shape. Yeah. Yeah, what I said is if you order a long mill, the best thing you can do is use the links I have in the uh, description section of my videos. 
Now this particular live will not have it because it was very impromptu. I didn't type in any description. But all my other videos have a link for Long Mills website and it has a code at the end of that link. You'll see it, it says IDC Woodcraft. And when you click that, it's basically assigning that to me so that they will know that you clicked it through my link and then they'll automatically uh, credit me with permission. Baba, have I ever tried placing my material in the corner of the work area to gain rigidity instead of being in the center? Um, yes, I have. Um, I think for the sake of shooting video, it's much more convenient to get out in the middle of the machine so I can kind of get all, you know, get around, uh, shoot videos from different angles of the project. So that's why you don't seem to do that, do it that much. So uh, to V2 Wins guy's comment, I don't have a fence. I right, don't have a fence over here. I'm going to be putting one in. Uh, because I want to, I want to demonstrate a new clamp. One of our CNC brothers, uh, Matt Sharp, I can't remember, but he designed a whole new clamp idea, and he sent me the clamps. And I want to create a video to show how it works. And it, worked. it was like as soon as I saw him, I said, "You guys send me something to shoot a video on it." So I've had him for about two months. It just takes a while to get the videos. Anyway. Um, so I don't have a fence, I use the grid lines as my reference. Uh, fences become more relevant if you're gonna cut the same thing over and over again. Uh, but they're also nice just to have that reference point. So when you're done cutting your project and, and the tool comes up, it's at zero point, you can turn your machine off, you know it's zeroed right at the fence corner. And then when you turn the machine on, and turn your control software on, the very first thing you do is zero X and Y, and you'll be set for your X and Y zero. But I'll be doing a fence video soon too. I got several videos I gotta get out. Um, I'll show you one uh, project I tested out. A lot of people have asked me how to make a bull, so I designed up the bull and I ran the bull out and I did it on a scrap piece of wood here. So otherwise it would have been a perfect bull and I'll get the bits that I use for this. I had to go to my inventory to get one of the bits. So to make a bowl, this bowl here, I used four router bits. And I want you to take note on this. 
if you ever decide to make a bowl. Now we got the big stiffy bowl bit here, and it's a large bit, so and it's got a lot of body. And this thing is going to uh, require a lot of work to remove so much material because it's so big. Right? So the other bit is the hog. This guy right here, the roughing bit. So what I do in the video that I'm creating, I use this to rough out the inside of the bowl, get all the hard work done. That's what this bit is designed to do. It's, it's available at IDC Woodcraft. You use this bit to hog out all that material. That way, you're not doing all the work on, with this bit and potentially putting a lot of work against your machine. And you'll leave a little bit of material left on the inside, on the bottom. You'll leave a little bit around that radius. And then you come in and you do your finish cut with the bull bit. And then because it's got that flat edge there, you do what a 20% step over, and it'll come around and clean up the bottom just like it's cleaned up here. All right, and I also use the hog to come out and profile the outside, but when I designed it, I left material on the inside and on the outside, uh, just a little bit, like a .05. And so I rough all that out, and then I'll come back in with the long, extra long down cutter because this is a deep cut, deep bolt, and I'll do a spiral down cut into it to get a nice clean cut all the way around until it cuts it all the way out. And so you see I got a nice clean finish on the whole project. Uh, the other one, the other bit that I used was this one here, the pointed quarter inch rounding bit, and that did the radius on the bowl here. And the final bit that I used was the 60 degree uh, ultra clean cutting V-bit. It's got a blade and I don't have it with me right here. And so, so it's, uh, I took a little thought to make sure that I uh, thought that out. So when I create that video, you can make a bowl and spare your bits at the same time and take advantage of the hog. I'm probably gonna put this whole set together as a uh, bowl making set. I don't know, you, you tell me if, if that sounds like an idea. You put it, yeah, make that, make that set in the comments. But I hope that, uh, hope that made some sense to you as my, as my thought process. Um, okay, V-Twin, it's V-Twin guy. Okay, nobody ever gets it right. You need to put a dash between the V and the T. All right, so we have made it through all the 3D cards. Now it's just now it's just doing the cleanup. Cutting out the rest of the okay, just finished up. And yay, now you'll be able to hear me. Okay, you see that pile of aluminum that just dropped out? This is huge for you to always remember whenever you change your bit. Um, you always want to clean out the collet, take the nut off, and clean that out. So we are going to. So you see I left, there's a, there's a little bit of a, there, let me just break that off. Faith one, faithful one. Okay, got it. Okay, let's clean this up. Nice. I definitely cannot do justice in the video of how nice that just turned out. Let's see if I can capture this. 
Okay, so you are right. That's where I tilted the table. Right where that little line is. But this came out really, really good. I can see I can see it much better than the camera's picking it up, but you can see there's definitely nice detail in this project. And using that little brush, it smoothed it out. Now it's a little bit ruffle on the bottom just slightly you can see it let's see if i can get that cleaned up a little bit using that brush just on one spot for now okay so this is part of the nature of aluminum you see that that brush is that, that it's a um it took that rough spot, that rough part off, but you see it left some digs in there. Yeah, this is very cool. So, at the end of the day, what we've done is number one, we've proved that the long mill can carve aluminum, uh, at least this little thin area. We're gonna have to try it with some, uh, uh, try some thicker cuts. And I proved out the, the, ultra fine detail 3d carving bit on aluminum and now i know the optimal speed for that is 60 inches per minute and that's this bit right here and if i run my finger at the edge down at the bottom it still feels sharp so i'm very pleased with that so the bit has a ton of life left on it the settings i use 60 inches per minute um five percent step over and it was you saw the depth, about 0.2 to a quarter inch deep. And that's it right there. So it plunge didn't really matter, but it did plunge directly into it. Uh, I, I didn't capture the rectangle that I built outside, so it plunged down here and overrun the part each way. But hey, that's what happens. Nice to stamp leathers. Oh, yeah. So I'll be doing an IDC woodcraft thing on brass next time. So now I can get this out there. Remember the IDC woodcraft CNC router bit app for your phone has all the CNC bits on it. Okay, feeds, speeds, uh, the specs for the bits, and we have added the metric. You can, you can switch from inches to metric for your feeds and speeds and all the dimensions, and we have now added different uh, materials. So you can click on pine or maple or things like that. And like acrylic bits, the O-flute, it will not show wood because we don't use it on wood. So. And I just want to say, um, I will try to remember to put links below Nicholas, down below this video. <clears throat> Things I threw in here were the brushes that polished that up, got them off of Amazon. We got the ultra fine detail 3D carving bit off of IDC Woodcraft. Um, the long mill CNC router MK2. Um, if you decide to get this router if you're in the market use my link my link will be in the description of videos but it won't be in this video right now and i don't think i talked about anything else g sender software and i did talk to you about the new bit that i am now testing and i ran it on the phantom at 350 inches per minute at three quarters of an inch deep just back and forth, back and forth. Now that's what you're looking at is 900, almost 200 feet of cut. They're running at 350 inches per minute. That bastard is fast, I'll tell you what. So anyway, my CNC brothers and sisters, we tested this out. Thank you for hanging out with me while I did this. Lots of noise, but uh, have a great weekend. And I'll be putting out a weekend video here and then uh, work on a couple other things. So. I gotta pack up bits, get them out today for those who have bought IDC bits. So you have a great weekend. It's raining here, it's gonna be raining here all day. So it's an inside kind of day. All right, we'll talk to you later.
Now I gotta figure out how to end this thing. Hey, quit. There it is. I see where I gotta do it at. <laughs>